Hey friends, let's talk about the state of UI component libraries in Svelte. So the main criteria for this list is if the UI component library is in active development, then GitHub stars, team ability, and etc. And if some of the libraries you know aren't on this list, it's basically because most of them are abandoned. So for example, Svelte 8, it has 25,000 views. This was updated last time two years ago. Uh, same with this library, let's see. Smelt, same story, two, three years ago. MDB Svelte, two, three years ago, abandoned. And you're going to notice this pattern with all of these libraries. Where is another one? Svelte Materialify, this was abandoned also. But yeah, <laughs> let's see what's left. Only the strongest will survive, right? And if you have any other suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Okay, so let's start with something that I would honestly prefer. And this is Swell Headless UI. And basically, instead of having a pre-made component with styles, you just get the logic. Let's say Listbox. If you were to implement a Listbox yourself, this would be really tedious to do because you have to follow the accessibility guidelines and etc. And these are notoriously hard to style yourself. So basically, the role of something like Headless UI is to just give you the logic like this. And you could just build the pieces like Lego blocks. So you can just do it like regular components. And this is honestly what I prefer the most. And this is based on the Tailwind headless UI, but you don't need Tailwind for this. You can use it without Tailwind. It comes with animations and other things. You can see how to style it. And this is really cool. But one downside of this, unfortunately, is the author of this seemed to have been <laughs> disappeared. So I don't know exactly what the state of this library is. I mean, open source is hard, right? And people have their own lives, but it would be <laughs> really nice if the person just communicated what is going on with the project because for example someone says hey is this project active and there is literally never any answer from the offer that would be really nice to know what's going on with this project maybe someone can fork it etc because i think this is really awesome to have a headless ui library for svelte but yeah basically this is really awesome and i've been using it for joy of code and i had no problems with this it works great so you have a dialogue here looks also very nice from these styles you don't get styles right so you have to do this yourself. Maybe you can look at examples. And this is probably a downside if you want styles because this can get to be a lot of work. For example, if I go to switch, if you want to use a custom label like uh, the code explodes a bit and maybe the UI framework should do more of the work for you, but that really depends on you. So just so you know it, headless UI, check it out. It's really awesome. I hope the offer returns because the community really seems eager to work on this project and make it successful. But yeah, let's talk about material. There's a couple of Svelte Material UI component libraries I already showed you, and the only one <laughs> that remained is this Svelte Material UI. And to be honest with you, this even looks like the best component library for Svelte if you can style it yourself, which you can, of course. But the problem to me is that ever since Google announced material, I honestly hate material. It's flat, boring, and clinical, and it's a really ugly design system, in my opinion, and please avoid using Material if you can. But of course, if you're doing a backend or something and using Material UI, no one cares, right? This, of course, really isn't nothing against this component library, etc., because it's just using the design system. But yeah, this is honestly great. One weird thing, though, is that for everything you have, so for example, button, you have to install a separate component, which is weird to me. Maybe they're doing it because of tree shaking, but... I don't know, isn't there a better way to do this? For example, you have to go into your terminal, now you have to type uh, self material UI button and etc. But yeah, that's maybe rent for another time. And of course, radio button, let's see, switch. Again, you have to install the switch, which is eh, but the components look great, of course, for material design at least. And it's feature complete. It's one of the older projects. Let's look. So yeah, 1000 commits. Wow, this person is dedicated. And of course, they're contributors, so props to them. Nothing against this library. I just can't stand material design myself. But if there's something you're interested in, go ahead. All right, so here is another one. So here is a carbon components for Svelte, and this is based on the IBM design system. And this one is more of a work in progress. It's not even version 1.0, so I'm really not going to critique it harshly. But it's a bit limiting. You can say gray and etc., white <laughs> and dark mode. So you have dynamic theming, and it's really like weird how you import this over CSS. But it has a lot of good components, so it has a button like this. And design is, of course, subjective. It's really not the best, but it's really not bad either. And you can also theme it, but theming is also weird. So, for example, let me just go here. I think here it is, theme. And then you have to do this weird thing. You have to, yeah, custom theme, and you have to pass it tokens or etc. 
This is one of my biggest gripe with all of these UI component libraries. Please, for the love of God, <laughs> just use CSS variables. Some of them are old like one year or two years and there's really no excuse. One of my biggest pet peeves is that they use either configuration over JavaScript or SAS, but why when there's CSS variables, which is way easier. So please, if you're the next person that's going to work on a UI library for Svelte, please just use CSS variables and use the web platform. But yeah, this honestly isn't a bad choice, but maybe it's not ready yet. You can see the toggle dark mode. It looks okay. So let's talk about UI component libraries based on Tailwind CSS. And this might be the reason of joy for someone and the reason of hate for others that don't like Tailwind because honestly what I think is going to happen is this Tailwind CSS libraries are so much better than everything else out there. I think what's going to happen over the years is that you're going to see most of Svelte and SvelteKit examples in Tailwind CSS just because the tooling around is so much better because something like Skeleton UI which I'm going to talk about in a second is like light years ahead of everything else to be honest. And people are always going to gravitate towards something that's easier to use. So I really hope we get a regular CSS UI component framework that's going to be the champion and that's going to do it the swelt way, quote and quote, because it can be really simple if you just leverage the web platform, you use CSS variables and not all of these convoluted things, which we're going to talk more about. Trust me, I have rants for this for days. So this is Daisy UI that's more framework agnostic and based on Tailwind CSS. So you can just get to the components, you can get the alert, arbort, avatar, etc. Really nothing much to talk about. Daisy UI is great if you need a framework agnostic solution. But let's talk about more about cell specific solution. So besides Daisy UI, you have Flowbyte, which is also not released. So Flowbyte Svelte also gives you a component and is based on Tailwind, gives you accordion, alert, avatar, block quote, breadcrumbs, and etc. And you can see the components here, see button, go here, so import the button. You can see the styling looks all right to me. You also have cards. And yeah, there's really not much to talk about. If you hate Tailwind, then you're probably not going to like this yet. But let's talk about one of the upcoming frameworks that seems to be doing the most innovation in this space recently, and that's Skeleton UI. And Skeleton UI looks really awesome, and I'm really excited to use this when I'm using Tailwind. And I know even some of the people who work on Skeleton watch my videos, so hello. And I also have some criticism. You're not Scott Free. <laughs> but it's mostly positive, don't worry. So get started. This is really awesome. You can get up and running in seconds. You just install Skeleton, set up Tailwind CSS, really easy using Svelte Add, then it has Teams. So the Skeleton team is watching one of my pet peeves I have is with Forms, for example. Let's see, Forms preview elements. And of course, this is a work in progress. I'm not going to be too harsh, but please for the checkboxes, don't make them round. They shouldn't look like radio buttons. So please, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love round corners myself, but checkboxes shouldn't look like radio buttons. So that's really weird. And there's really a lot of problems with the themes and contrast. So for example, this is fine, but even this green theme is starting to be hard to read. And when you get to other themes, this is probably not passing the contrast check. When you go to this theme, uh, this is barely probably passing the contrast check. And then there's some cool themes, see foam, they don't have problems with the text and the background. This is definitely not passing the test. So let me just see Sahara. And this is not picking apart skeleton CSS, this is just something I noticed. This one looks good. Gold Nouveau. Yeah, this one also definitely suffers from this. And Crimson, this one is all right. But yeah, really, Skeleton UI, I'm really excited for the release and the team seems to be doing good work and good job, everyone. All right, so let's look at some other UI component libraries. The first one is going to be Svelte UI. This is something that I don't understand. So let me just see. Okay, their, their dark mode is weird. So this is in beta, so I'm not going to be too critical. But what I don't understand about these libraries is when you look at something like this, you immediately understand that this person is coming from a React background because let's see installation kit, next steps, learn the basics. Let me just go here. So just like all of these things up front, you have to understand for whatever reason, it's really convoluted, but it's actually a decent UI library. So this is what I don't understand. This is very React to me. Why is there a need for this weird wrapper, right? It's probably because server side rendering or something I don't understand because when I remove it, it works fine. So that's probably it. But here's what I'm talking about. Why are we using JavaScript to pass theming options and etc. We can just use the web platform and CSS variables. So this really reminds me of something like React 
which honestly I don't mind. If I'm using React, I know I'm in React land and I know what I can expect. But when I'm using Svelte, I expect something way simpler and this really doesn't have that Svelte spirit to me. Yeah, the barrier to entry for this is very high. So this is <laughs> this weird provider surpassing a team or whatever. At least it's type. So let's see general concept of it forwarding teaches you about some useful cell concepts like action. This is really great. Bindings classes. And then we can look at the components. So you have the app shell here. Familiar with this. You have grid. If you want to use that, here's how a basic button looks like. Really great looking library, great documentation. I love this part though. Oh, so you have also a burger component. Yeah, so you have a card if you want that. And basically that's it. I think it's based on uh, design. So let's see. Includes more. I think it's based on Mantin or something. I don't remember where I've read this, but yeah. You can check this out. Looks awesome. So LTI beta. And yeah, that's it for that. Okay, so let's talk about my favorite that also has a massive flaw. So I discovered this component attractions. And this is probably one of the best designed ones. It's absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. And I really want to use it. It's really awesome. Let me just see components, accordion. You have autocomplete, badge. Their site looks gorgeous in documentation, but the problem is in their examples, they don't include the imports for the example. So if you copy over the example, you have to import it yourself, which is uh, tedious, but okay, I can get behind it. That is fine. So we can see how a button looks like, which is really awesome. Let me just see, they have a model and a dialogue, of course. It looks really pretty. Uh, let me just see, they have a switch also, I think. Yeah, switch, love me some switches. Yeah, and then, and okay, here comes <laughs> that part that I'm frustrated by looking at all of these libraries. So let me just see, teaming with SAS. Of course, I don't have anything against SAS, but I really don't want to use SAS because I'm using post CSS or something else, for example. And you can configure it in some convoluted way, but why can't it be this way simpler? So you have to import their SAS theming, which really isn't bad, you do it like this, but my question is why? Just use CSS variables, please. And then you have to override the CSS var uh, SAS variables, my bad, see? <laughs> That's constantly on my mind, okay. Yeah, and then it shows you like this, and I'm like, why this barrier to entry, right? And this is such a shame, this is such a gorgeous library. And if we go to their GitHub, let me just see. Yeah, it's even actively maintained, okay, <laughs> maybe a year ago or etc. But I mean, there's really nothing to it. Like simple does it, right? You don't really need always the most complicated thing. But yeah, that's really such a shame. Just let the users use the web platform. There's like really <laughs> no reason to use all of this convoluted tooling and etc. And let's talk about uh, honorable mention. This one is also a work in progress. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's pro UI. So this is really unique. So it gives you what I talked about, CSS variables, so you can configure your design tokens. So it has, let me see, alert buttons. And I also really like this demo here. It's a bit scuffed at times, but yeah, it's a really neat idea and great presentation. So you can see the code here. So you have danger and etc. Here's a switch. So you can see the default switch with a label. And the author is actually working on this and it really looks like something awesome. So I wanted to shout it out, even though it might not be ready, even though it's version three, but it doesn't really seem ready. Let me just go here. Yeah, I don't know. I can't find their GitHub link here, but yeah, something like this, maybe they should fix that. Someone submit them this because it's really not a good look when something like this is broken in documentation. But yeah, this is a really interesting project in my opinion. And then let's talk about some framework agnostic solutions. So first let's talk about agnostic UI, which is really awesome. But unfortunately this one is also not that ready. I guess you can use it, get set up now. So you can use this for any framework. It's really simple to install. I think this might be my favorite one even of all the others I tried. So you can just install it to say agnostic dash svelte. And then for example, it tells you you have to import the CSS, etc. Then you can just use the button or whatever component you want. So let me just go here, buttons. And it shows you the buttons, really looks great also. And it's also easy to customize because it lets you use CSS variables. What a novel idea, right? <laughs> Amazing. I love it. View source, yeah, it's really not that bad. This is just a lot of examples, right? What we've seen here, this is really awesome. So also they have, let me just say, switch. I don't know why, but if a project doesn't have a switch, I just, <laughs> not interested. I don't know why I love switches, but yeah. 
switches are really cool, I guess. Uh, but yeah, basically not a lot to talk about. It, it has toast and then you have regular CSS components if you just want to use vanilla. So here's how the toast look like. Yeah, let me see if I can quickly, oh, here it is. Wonderful, wonderful documentation. What a wonderful project. Let's see on GitHub how it looks like. Yeah, seven months ago, eight months ago. Yeah, I mean, it's actively developed, <laughs> quote unquote. But yeah, let me just close this. And I think this is it for Agnostic UI, check it out. Some of the things aren't ready yet and are weird. For example, let me see, dialogue, I think. Following button, let's just see. If I open the Svelte, please consider Svelte dialogue experimental and not yet ready for production until we can add missing test. So they're saying it's ready. And then you have to add this weird dialogue route. I'm not really sure why. And But it works, of course, if you just copy this over. Or you can use the native one from HTML since it's supported. So maybe it's easier doing it yourself. But yeah, really cool agnostic UI. Check it out. And then, of course, honorable mentions, the notorious BIG, I mean, a uh, bootstrap. So you can build fast responsive size with bootstrap. And already I don't have to talk about bootstrap. Everyone knows about bootstrap. It's the most used one. Not sure if you listened to any recent syntax episode. They did one with the commonly used uh, CSS class names, I think. And all of the class names are, of course, because of bootstrap. And when they talk about what's the most used media queries, you guessed it, the most used media queries are the bootstrap media queries. So basically people think that bootstrap and WordPress are these crusty things, but they're honestly the thing that powers the web the most. So yeah, that's really ironic. And yeah, they have a lot of components here that are ready for you to use. I really don't have to explain Bootstrap, I think. Yeah, and you can have a look at here, button and etc. Carousel. Maybe this is something you enjoy. Hey, I'm not going to judge if it works for you, right? Another thing I always liked was Bulma, which was really like an alternative to Bootstrap. So again, you can go to Docs and you can see their elements or components, I think. Let me just see. Button. What's the difference between an element and the component? I guess maybe this has some logic built in, so button doesn't have logic, but this might have some logic, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but yeah, you can even give this a look if you're interested in. And here's an interesting one I recently learned about. So it's beer CSS and it's based on material design, of course, but actually I don't have a problem with this one for some reason, I don't know why. So when I go explore, let me just see buttons. I think maybe it's because this is a well-designed site, so that also plays in. And it's a bit different, like, this looks good to me. Even if it's material design, right? Okay, I I'll stop hating on material design, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, let me just go here. Uh, fabs, awesome, look at this. This is really awesome. You have containers, expansions, grids, let me just see media. Models, you have models. Let me just see how that looks. Model, okay, confirm. But yeah, let me just close this. But yeah, that's basically it. I think when it comes to Svelte, it really makes sense to have a champion that's just regular CSS a UI component framework that's really simple to use, uses the CSS variables and etc. And I would really love that. All right, so if you enjoyed the content so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can also support me by becoming a YouTube channel member or find the Patreon in my description. So thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.